Welcome to our latest rebroadcast, podcast number 89. The Shifting Poles and Global Turmoil. A sobering update from the Council of Time, featuring Mike from COT being rebroadcast here on End Generation Project. This episode originally aired on June 28, 2024, exclusively on councilofthime.com. For more details, check the link in the description below. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore eschatology and navigate today's challenges in this captivating episode number 89, The Shifting Poles and Global Turmoil, a sobering update from the Council of Time. To gain deeper insights, visit the Council of Time's official website linked below. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction and seeking the most high God's guidance. Your support helps us guide individuals towards truth, sobriety, and preparedness for the perilous times foretold in scripture. Join our exclusive locals community for EGP family members and enjoy early access to exciting content. Thank you for being an integral part of the End Generation Project's success. Before diving into today's rebroadcast podcast, episode 89, titled The Shifting Poles in Global Turmoil, a sobering update from the Council of Time, we're excited to announce the rollout of new features on our YouTube channel. We're introducing Super Chat premieres and a new merch store directly on the End Generation Project channel. You can now purchase our latest designs on a variety of merch, or leave us a tip of whatever you would like in the chat window of our premiered videos. Stay tuned for these exciting updates coming soon. Your support through the last six months has been so crucial. These new features will allow us to reach more people, offer more insightful episodes, and expand our mission. By shopping with us, you're not just getting great products, you're making a meaningful impact on our community. We couldn't have come this far without the support of all our ape members and God's blessing. Visit our store now to explore our collection and help sustain our efforts. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. Now let's kick back and listen to episode 89, The Shifting Poles and Global Turmoil, a sobering update from the Council of Time, right here on N Generation Project. Good evening, everybody. I know I'm late. It's one of those days. Today is a challenging day, and uh, so was yesterday. I know what you guys are thinking. You think I'm going to give some input on what happened last night? I already did that. Well, you guys, many of you guys, you should know about the debate last night. And uh, I don't know what that was. I don't think it was a debate, but uh, the pick is made. You guys do understand, though. There is another. You guys know that, right? There is another. So. They had to have this before. Before they picked their guy, their person. That's why they had it so early. And this was on purpose. The debate was. At any rate. The entire country is on the move. Things should be uh, quite clear where things are headed. So I certainly hope you guys are praying for all those in this country who will stand in a specific capacity. That Because it's a very serious time. Very serious time. All right. I want you guys to know something. 1990. North Pole, 1990 North Pole, moving at about a very slow rate in the 90s, very very slow rate, very consistent rate, that began to change. The North Pole, as it moves satellites, GPS satellites have to be adjusted as it moves. When GPS came out, they were adjusting GPS systems probably about, I'm going to give an estimate. Now I have the readings on the other ones, but back in the 90s when it first came out, 
Uh, actually, it was before then. But their adjustments were every few years. They had to make some adjustments. That changed. In fact, the frequency of adjustment I became more and more because the North Pole was moving far too much. Right? We all know that. We can see that in the weather. How the weather is right now, we can, we can see how it's affecting everything. So they adjusted satellites probably about, because 1990, the North Pole was moving about nine miles per year. That's not too much. Nine miles per year. Right? 2,000 comes. Those adjustments, huh? they really wreaked havoc on GPS satellites. In fact, in 2020, right? 1990, it was nine miles per year. 2020, it was 40 miles per year. The North Pole went from moving nine miles per year in 1990 to moving 40 miles per year in 2020. See an increase? Yes. GPS systems were updated probably about every five years because of the movement of the North Pole. 2020 GPS systems were updated every five months. So it went from five years to five months, the updates. 2024, that number's outrageous. It is outrageous. The, the absolute zone, what they have to adjust is, is mind-boggling, right? So we have an exponential uh, increase in the poles' movement. Also, at the exact same time in 1990, our magnetosphere, right, the magnetic shielding around the Earth was at a specific rate, in keeping with the change that we see happening, the field is weakened enormously. And it will continue to weaken. This means that animals are going to lose their migration habits. They will end up in the wrong places. We, we are undergoing this right now. Okay? And it used to be thought that, I remember somebody saying back in 2015, you know, if, if, Magnetic north and south chain. No big deal. That was a general consensus. That's not the consensus now. Now they have a better understanding of what's taking place and what happened in times past. When the magnetic field becomes chaotic, which is what's happening now, and diminishes, and then it turns into spaghetti, and then it will realign itself. But in that realignment, it goes away almost totally. All the radiation from the sun penetrates the atmosphere. Now, at first, the atmosphere absorbs the heat from the sun. We see that happening right now. The atmosphere would absorb the radiation. It would become hotter and hotter. You would have an increase in cloud coverage. An increase. I have a term for that. What we're seeing is a type of atmosphere compression with particulate or particulate injection into the upper atmosphere with a diminishing magnetosphere. Boy, oh boy. It's going to get rough. This change in the poles magnetically causes a physical change in the planet, right? Plus, it causes great or, or bigger earthquakes. Now, you guys do understand that the last eight big earthquakes have shifted the axis of the Earth. You guys do understand that, right? They thought that to be impossible. When the Fukushima earthquake hit, that shifted the axis. Those two earthquakes in Haiti and Chile shifted the axis. So these big earthquakes are shifting the axis of the Earth physically. And they're going to cause this flipping of the poles magnetically of the Earth, right? To cause an even bigger wobble, which is going to affect the equator, naturally. Because if our, if our poles continue to shift, the equator will realign itself with the sun. 
the rotation of the Earth is going to be chaotic as it wobbles, which means the equator will stretch in a way. You have to see it by graphic so that you will understand because it's going to be chaotic. It is said now that it's going to reach all the way to the Great Lakes into portions of Canada. It won't maintain itself there. In other words, say, for example, the equator goes through the Great Lakes one week, through Canada the next week, through the southern half of the USA the next week. And then, of course, it repeats that cycle. This is what we're getting into. So it's going to have a wide area that it will affect. It. That means our weather phenomena, it'll change even more. And actually, it means we have not uh, experienced the heavy changes. Not yet. We haven't. And of course, if Earth is being affected this way, so are the other planets. Did you know that Mars, it too, is being affected in a big way? Magnetically, Jupiter is likewise. So is Neptune. So is Mercury. Right? So we have something. The, these effects is happening in our solar system. It's just unfortunate. We live in a time when these things are happening right now. I mean, right now. Right? This will cause, you know, NASA's going to have to make some major changes in space and the plans about space. Most, have you guys noticed, most of the rich are preoccupied with attempting to leave Earth. Have you noticed that? There's a plan to occupy. Another type of rapid deployment of a station will take place and... They're trying to make it where people can actually occupy space for about three years. Not go to another planet, necessarily, but occupy space for about three to four years. They will attempt to escape some of these rapid changes in the Earth. Of course, we know that's not going to work out too well. And the Bible it says, that though you ascend up to the heavens, I'll pull you down, the Lord said. So the Lord has already dealt with that topic. If they go down to the center of the earth or in the earth, the Lord will get them, pull them up. If they ascend up to the heavens, he'll pull them down. So uh, they, they can't, they're not going to dodge what's coming. And we're extremely close, very close. The details that we're about to go through here in COT, sometimes they can be quite daunting. Right? Details are not for everybody. So I know I'm, I'm going to break down this equator issue. I'm going to segment it so that everybody understands it. Of course, you guys will be able to review written materials about the equator as well as have, but you'll have updates of very frequently. As I said before, this is going to be a very costly event. It will be. It comes at a time when we have yet another problem in space. We're entering into a trashy part of space that carries lots of debris. It's not very clean. What I mean by that is dust. Now, space, things being dusty in space, on a scale that space is, that means meteor storm. So, we have to get ready for that, too. That means lots of fires. We know that the surface of the earth is volatile. Fires right now, they're consuming many different places. Imagine if a meteor storm came and fire was introduced from the heavens to the earth. That would be an instant issue that we're not capable of dealing with on a, a total scale. But those days are coming too. Ah. So, when you guys see these details and charts and everything like that, keep your wits about you. Right? There's a timing to all of this. You're in the middle of it, yes. But there's also a timing where much worse things will take place. And, of course, prophecy plays its role in these times. Now, we don't know exactly how the Lord will do it. But we do know that for his people, 
a way will be made. A way will not be made for those who continually reject and ultimately cast down his word. Remember something in Revelation, they had all but casted down the word of God to the ground. They had altered what the gospel was. They carried some sort of a hybrid gospel, right? Even the seat of Israel was corrupted. So that means our prayers must be expansive. We can't forget about those who did not forget about us. They truly know that schedule. But right now we're in that time. My hope is that you guys are ready for that. That you can stay focused enough to help people out. Because they're going to have to adjust. And no matter who's in leadership, we have some big challenges to face. We have big challenges. You know, I know the Air Force is. I know that all the countries, as of last night, they were in panic mode. Do you guys know that? Panic mode. All the people of all of these nations have uh, made their choice about U.S. leadership. They made their choice all over the globe. If done right, this could be a very good thing. If pride takes over. Well, if pride steps in, There's still a way another candidate can come to the forefront, be elected president. And nobody ever suspected. And no, we're not talking about Obama. The Democrats did not pick a final person to be president. You know that's coming up. They had this debate prior to the convention on purpose so they could see they have not picked their final person. You do realize they could pick somebody else. You do realize that for the sake of the nation, the president can step aside. You also, do you understand that Jill and, and um, Biden have often done things for the sake of the nation. He could step aside and somebody else could step forward. Right? You also understand there are radical people within the country. As we stated at the beginning of the year, that they want a female president. You do understand that, don't you? Not male, female. And I already gave you guys a statement concerning what they said would happen with a female president. It was out of their own mouths. A female president. So, we live in those times, but we'll cover that when I come back from this small break, okay? I just want you guys to know where we are. And as far as, as, far as who's voting for who, you guys be surprised, there's a lot of upset people last night on both sides. The greater demographic of folks who were going to vote, they were upset. They were disappointed. Right? I did watch the entire debate. I did. As I listened to uh, Pastor Paul, I was listening to the debate. Then, of course, I called Pastor Paul. But, yes, I heard the entire debate. I know a lot of people can't stomach that. But if you get a chance to uh, see it, I did encourage that last night. If you get a chance to see it, you will see what, what we are dealing with. know what to pray for i'll be back in a few minutes right here at cot everybody it is friday so i'm sure you guys have questions i'll take a couple of questions i can't hold you too long i'm being yanked away for a cot thing we're gonna set this thing up quickly in this house of cot we have a lot to do in a very short time to do it in i'll be right back in just a few minutes right here at the council of time Okay, everybody, I'm back. I had to get some coffee. I have to wind down something. I do. My fingers hurt from typing all last night. You know, I do enjoy coding. 
I do. I like problem solving. I do. I like problem solving. I, I sometimes, sometimes my mind wonders. I get these ideas about our leadership, this country, and the world, right? and then I realize something. If man could fix it, he would have done so. He would. Oh, guys, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. You're going to hear stories about people who believe that the best times of humanity lie ahead of us. Now, let me translate that to what that means. We all know as believers in Christ, there are dark forces that are rising in the earth. You can see them. They're like salivating porcupines with fangs, right? They're ready to pounce on things. The earth is being perverted on all sides, but a type of order is coming. Not our father's order either, a type of order. And it's going to seem, at first, a bit radical by nature to hear about it until it begins to take place. And when it takes place, we're going to have to be at our strongest at our soberest point regarding our belief in Christ. The war is beginning. I know that many people cannot see this. I know that people are encouraged uh, by Ohio's decision to post the uh, Bible and the Ten Commandments back in the schools again. That sounds very encouraging. I want you guys to look beyond any type of tapping and understand what's happening. If you think what's happening is uh, going to work out to be a good thing, you're wrong. It's starting a war. Do you hear me? So let me give an example of this. Because I know it sounds good, but it's time that people see things for what they are. When people make Christianity a law of anything concerning faith, when they make that a law, it provokes people against Christianity. It's going to polarize any and all spirits against Christianity to form a coalition against Christianity. Christianity is about to be the number one most hated Belief on the planet, in the USA, in the USA, do you hear me? Now you will see darkness rise. This is one of the points, one of the things that, you know, when I heard that they were going to make it post the Ten Commandments and that that was a decision, that was a state's decision, my stomach dropped. It did. That's a marker. That's a big marker, right? Now, I wasn't sure about that until Ohio made the move. Other states are going to follow suit. This is going to polarize many people against Christianity. Now, you're about to see the truth. And you're going to have a lot of your brothers and your sisters listen to me that will not listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not be humble, but they're going to make it worse. Here's what's happening. You're going to have a lot of parents, a lot of groups, a lot of people, right, that you thought were loving and passionate and kind. You're going to have a lot of people rise up against Christianity. They're going to say no. They will protest this more than they have ever protested anything else. I really hope you realize this hits at the core of the spiritual war. And it will polarize sides. And it will not work out in the favor of believers. We live in the end times. This is going to cause many to fall away. This is going to be the, the nail in the coffin, so to speak. For quite a few people. This will cause darkness to coalesce. And to grow. 
in power and it will win over young people. You're right in the middle of a time right now. When the angry people come forward this weekend, as well as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with a continuance, and the fights begin in the courts, and division begins in government, even more concerning Christianity, and the hatred rises, and you'll see it. You're going to start to realize, right? Especially when time continues and these things get worse. You will see who is who. And all of us were, we were very nice, nice guys, right? We were top of the class, nice guys. We did everything to, we, we set a standard wherever we went. We excelled in whatever we touched or aspired to go forward in. One day, we were having a discussion. We started to discuss Christ. Of the trio, one person, their face changed immediately. Now, this guy is a nice guy. He would give you the shirt off of his back. He would do anything for you. This guy did not curse. He really respected everybody around him, around him. He was humble. He was meek. He was everything you would think. But when we discussed Christ, this guy changed. I mean, this guy mutated right in front of us, meaning his demeanor was altered in a way that was impossible for him to be. And this guy said, why did you have to bring him up? And he began to curse and curse and slur and curse and everything else. This guy turned into a raving lunatic that fast. And you're talking, you're talking about a relationship that was four years in the making. We were so closely knit, right? That if one of us thought about something too much, the other one would get a headache. That's how close knit we were. And when this guy did what he did, you could see what was really resting within this guy all the time. I mean, the entire time. That's why I'm not fooled by niceness. Niceness, being kind and being nice and being thoughtful and all these things, that does not fool me. I'm not moved by that. Not deceived by that either. And this guy changed. There was a physical change in this person. I, You know, me and my friend were sitting and watching. Both of us could have sworn this guy turned 90 shades darker. That's impossible. This guy went from being an average person to, to something unrecognizable. And it looked as though he became a lot taller, a lot bulkier. That was so long. You know, guys, that was back in the 80s. This guy did that. That was the first instance, the first lesson when I truly learned how a person is does not represent what's inside them. A person can truly be identified by their love for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not fooled by people who say they believe in Jesus Christ either. I'm not fooled by that because lips lie. Those who love the gospel of Jesus Christ walk by the standards of the gospel. They have convictions by way of that gospel. You know, that means they may not get everything right, but they love the Lord's gospel. And if it's one thing, that's never absent. Anybody who loves the Lord's gospel, it is forgiveness of all things. That marks it all the time. They can talk about, you know, what they do and what they don't do. But I've noticed a, a huge contrast. There have been so many who talked about how they loved the Lord and they ended up being evil people. But they happen to be the same people 
who do not like the idea of forgiveness. They don't like that. Most people talk about what another person should pay for. Not the Lord. The Lord spoke about forgiveness. A real believer, somebody who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ, is always going to have that conversation, that mindset of forgiveness. But a person who does not necessarily believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ is always going to discuss what a person should pay for. That'll stir the pot. Here it comes. They can't help it, by the way. Your, your counterparts of the dark realm cannot help it. They can't stand it. It's their number one weapon. They love to point to people and say what they should pay for, but with the same breath. Right? In other words, these people do not talk about forgiveness. Always remember that. Be wary of a person who does not speak about forgiveness. Forgiveness is part of the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the entire reason for Christ in our lives that we may be forgiven. So if a person accepts Christ, how could they deny that somebody else should be forgiven? Would that be darkness at work? You better believe it. If you can remember that, never forget that. You'll see who you're talking to all the time. Evil does not believe in forgiveness. And forgiveness is the main reason Jesus died on the cross. Think about that. You ever hear a person say, well, that person should pay for this, that, and the other. It's a good thing that our father is not like that. And in the book of Job, isn't that what, isn't that what uh, Satan did to Job? His friends, Job's friends, came to him. If you read Job carefully, you're going to understand that Job's friends came to him and tried to tell Job, hey, confess that you messed up and did some evil. This is why you're going through things. Job's friends were giving him advice. And then one day, Job began to give in to it. Well, maybe it is, you know, I don't even know why I was even born. So they kind of succeeded in causing Job to question the father. And when he did so, he got chewed out by the most high. He did. That's when God told Job that you're created. He said, Job, I created you for my pleasure. You exist for my pleasure, not for your own, for my pleasure. Yeah, Job found that out. But these dark forces in the earth, they're doing that very thing. And it just so happens they're going to use the subject. A forced Christianity to bring about a great evil. A great evil. Why? Because you have a lot of people who would gladly force their belief upon somebody else. Yes, they would do that. That's forbidden by the Most High. That is forbidden according to the gospel. Right? That's forbidden. Because it should always be by what? Request. That's why Jesus said, if you go into a place and they don't receive what you say, shake the dust off of your feet and go somewhere else. He never said subdue the whole place and make them listen. That's not what he said. So you have these dark forces in the earth that are going to cause the people to receive a false type of purity. I'm telling you that dream about that vomit being exchanged. I know it's not good to talk about that, but it looks so pure going from one person to another. That was what we're living in now. That was a doctrine. 
And it seemed to be pure. It seemed to be the real deal. But I know what it really was. And where it came from, the source of where it came from, was a demonic entity that was bound in flesh that can never keep his original form. And it was feeding. Anybody who ate this stuff, that is those who would believe in it, this was uh, purely regurgitated by darkness in the first place. That's what you see happening now. Now you're going to see the numbers change. It also means that we're very close to the close of a big season. A season will come that's incredibly fast and costly. Boy, oh boy. Hmm? Some of you guys remember that uh, dream, huh? You remember that dream? I had that dream, and that dream was very disturbing. It was. Because it was the people joined. Anybody who listened to this person, they were believing in this person, right? They were believing in what this person was saying, and they ended up, when they wanted to get real serious about it, they ended up exchanging vomit with this person. I call it vomit. They didn't see it as vomit. They saw it as something pure. This person was simply talking. I could see beyond the words. And what this person was emitting out of their mouth looked pure. I mean, it looked pure. It was the whitest of white. Nevertheless, it was vomit. And anybody who partook of it was stuck. They were stuck. So what that represented was this, this terrible exchange I saw. What it represented was the doctrine a person would speak. And those who accept that doctrine became part of that entity. I even saw a guy that came to his senses and tried to escape, and he could not because there were four-legged hairy spiders that protected the entire camp. You could not escape. They would hunt you down and kill you. These four-legged spiders had on camel vests. Military vest, four-legged spiders with no heads. They just had these camel vests on, and they were guarding the area. I saw them run a person down, and they killed them. They dismembered this person. They tormented this person. So once you are a partaker of this, you're not coming out of it. So which let me know it was a final declaration a person would make. And you had a lot of people becoming a part of this place. Oh, they took care of people all right, it seemed. At the end of that dream, you could see clearly this was a prison. A prison. And all who shared in that ideology was doomed. I mean doomed. But while it lasted, they had everything they needed They had promised, they had things, they they weren't struggling anymore. Many of these people came from unfortunate circumstances, but they were all partakers of vomit, which seemed pure when it was spoken of. But it was still vomit because I looked behind to see the entity that this was coming from. And the spinal cord of this person, because I looked at this person, and the spine elongated. That's when I knew this person was not normal. The spine of this person elongated right in front of my face. This person had a, a, a dark, they had dark, a dark robe on, right? But they had turned around and I could see their spinal cord. Now, at first it was normal. But then this person's spinal cord elongated. The source, the person who was had all this pure vomit, this white stuff that would come out, it looked pure, but in truth it was vomit. Their spinal cord elongated. They began to change their physical form. I know at that point this was demonic, purely demonic, but it was more than demonic. This thing, whatever this thing was, was ancient because other demons served it. Those four-legged military militant things, nobody could see them. Nobody could see those four-legged spiders. But if anybody tried to escape that camp, it would hunt them, hunt them down and dismember them. Nobody could escape because of those four-legged spiders. 
those four-legged spiders lined the beaches. And everybody was stuck on that campus. For those who did not accept it, they simply walked away. They heard it, but some did not accept, and they simply walked away. To those who accepted it, they had to partake of the vomit to seal it. And when they did, it was no getting out of that. Once a person did that, there was no escape for them. That was a dream I saw. Once a person partook of that vomit, they could never get away. Anybody who tried to get away after that point, they died. They were dismembered trying to get away. as being consistent with the word of God. Just like the beast, those who worship the beast, their names are not written in the book of life. Think about that. Because in the Bible it says, only those whose names are not written in the book of life are going to take the mark of the beast. Only those whose names are not written in the book of life are going to worship the dragon and worship the beast. Those whose names are written in the book of life will not worship the dragon and they won't worship the beast. I got news for you. People are worshiping the dragon right now before the beast ever comes. There's worship of the dragon and there are many people who are not written in the book of life because they're worshiping the dragon. The dragon is tied to you guessed it the infrastructure of nations of this earth. Lord, have mercy. Those who worship these nations have, and now you know why they're so violent, so militant. Now you know why they can, they can appear to be good, but when you're behind closed doors, they are vicious as wolves. Now you know why. They hold dirt over each other's heads. And if anybody tries to escape their little dragon worshiping club, just like politics, when you're trying to get away from politics after being in it, you're almost utterly destroyed. How many people do we have to see being destroyed in politics? Who tried to tell everybody else, hey, you might want to back away from this. This is not what you think. Oop, they're silenced. How many people have to die? Before we get the point. Yet you have a lot of people who aspire to be just like those who are in politics. Who seem to be speaking something pure. Something wholesome. Something good. But it's more like vomit than anything else. You have a lot of man worship these days. You got a lot of man worship. I'm telling you it's happening. And it cannot be seen by those whose names are not written in the book of life. If your name is in the book of life, you're held by the power of Christ. By decree of the living God, you are not to be given over to absolute and utter darkness. That's by decree of our Father. If your name is in the book of life, and if your name is in the book of life, it's because you truly chose Christ. Now, let me tell you this again. A person cannot choose Christ and deny his gospel. I'm sorry. To choose Christ is to fully adopt the gospel, not to reinterpret the gospel, to fully adopt it. That means they're going to have it. They're going to believe in forgiveness. When a person believes in forgiveness, they're not violent, are they? You can only become violent when you believe that somebody should not be forgiven. Is that when people become violent? Yes, it is. When you believe a person should not be forgiven, you become violent, emotionally compromised. As it says in the book of, his, of uh, Ezekiel and Isaiah, the whole head is sick. It should have called us to a higher standard. But you can see how it's a person's choice. 
and we stand at the at the gate of yet another season that many won't escape from. They won't. I see that Kennedy, but I, I, you know what? I kind of drifted away from the big ears guy, right? Because I was thinking in my head now, okay, how's this guy with the big ears? How's that going to fit into anything? And I kind of left it alone. I did. I left it alone. I knew there. I didn't know how that was going to come about. And so I'm, you know, kind of leave it alone until certain things come forward. But it's good that you guys know about it. Yeah, that person, that person I saw was, they had big ears. That was one of the main features. Right? They had big ears. I mean, some they had some big ears. They could hear everything, evidently. They had big ears. Um, that was one of the standout features. Everything was focused in on this person for a time. Right? But we'll see how things unfold. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Because I personally, I don't know. I don't know. That was just something I saw. I don't know. But if it unfolds, it unfolds. I'll tell you one thing, though. We we certainly do live in this a generation before massive change. And many will be lost. If we could only remember the basics, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty, right? Through God, by God, decreed by God, we're pulling down strongholds, correct? Isn't that what the word says? That is to undo the works of Satan himself, not to fight flesh. There are other people who do that. God has called you guys to a higher standard. But be warned, many will be compromised this time around. They will. Okay, let me get some questions from you guys. I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much. Somebody said Navy map is out of date. I thought I think it's out of date too. I do. I think it's out of date. I think it's out of date. I do think it's out of date. Well, I hope you guys have that about um, about the gospel as something we can so easily forget, right? Especially our topic of forgiveness. That's something that really is forgotten a lot. Christ is the word he spoke, and the word he spoke is Christ. Christ is the word of God made flesh and dwelt among men. His whole word is about forgiveness. Somebody said, can you teach me how to code? Sure, I can teach a lot of people that. I'm going to have some sort of workshop on, um, I think I'll do that with, uh, I'll pick a language out, probably about four languages. And she said, I know about, efficiently, I know about seven languages efficiently. I use all the time, all the time. I only use a couple of languages uh, for the web, code languages. But I know about seven efficiently. I program from, uh, because I took I took a lot of course, a lot of I had, to have, I had to have game theory, of course, right? And we live in a new world, so I had to have game theory. And um, I did it. I instructed in game theory for about, I don't know, about a year and a half. But that was with uh, some naval personnel. So they could see it, too. So they could add that into their, their arsenal, their toolbox. Um, that's game design. Right? Game theory, game design, those things. So, and that was when DirectX, you guys remember DirectX when it first popped out, right? Uh, I think one of the, I was so early, I was one of the guys who was uh, certified DirectX, actually. MS-2, 
as certified down the board with a bunch of other things you had to have just to do, you know, the simplest of tasks, not on a civilian side, but uh, on the government side. Right? So, uh, yeah, had to have all that good stuff. Anyway, Sister Mary said, oh, boy, you're dating us, Michael. Well, we have a lot of newbies here that don't know about direct decks and punch cards, do they? I remember punch cards. I do remember that. Yeah, but slow processing of binary data, wasn't it? Punch cards. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's just, I, I tell you what, this new generation, they have no idea of the struggle it took to do most things, and, and they would rather deny uh, some of the things that we did. And I, get, I used to get a little upset when I used to hear people say, you know, well, you know, mankind didn't do this and they didn't do that. They have no idea of the struggle uh, people had back then and what they accomplished. They did, they did not have the tools they have. You know, people have tools today. They can make, everybody can make their own particle accelerator at home, but it's almost like a laziness and a fracturing of a mindset goes with it, and people won't do it. They're highly dependent upon somebody else's knowledge. They have forgotten how to do the basic things, right? For example, like me in, in, in with electronics, a lot of people, they know how to program chips that are already made. And I'm still a guy that knows how to configure transistors into NAND and NOR gates, things of that nature, from transistors, right? From NPN and PNP combination transistors, um, working with MOSFETs, the basics. I still know how to work with the basics. I can still engineer the basics. I mean, for goodness sake, I can still make an amplifier, right? To amplify certain signals and, 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 and traps and filters and you name it. And that's with transistors. And to this day, I still have a bunch of uh, uh, co-pair transistors with the, uh, you know, the 3404s and 3406s, NPN and PMP. I play around with those a lot to come up with some pretty ingenious things, right? Analog computing. I play with that a lot. I do. And it uncovers a lot. It really does. Plus, they're unhackable. They're unhackable because they're not, uh, you know, some, some floating chip full of transistors. But they are more direct than anything else. Uh, they perform very specific tasks that cannot be interrupted. Somebody say, can you teach me Bitcoin? No. No, 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 no. You, but here, here's my advice with Bitcoin, right? My advice with Bitcoin. Before you even get a Bitcoin, understand what it is first. Why would you get something you don't understand? To understand Bitcoin is, uh, you know, all the resources, they're out there on the Internet. But when I used to invest, and I told this story a long time ago, I was never emotionally attached to investments. Never. The conviction came upon me from this. You ready? Not only did I get very good at the system, because I remember investing in Microsoft a long time ago. Long time ago. That was when uh, 311 was about to pop out. When you invest in, if you become emotionally vested in your investment with anything you invest in, you're going to make emotional moves, which means you're going to, you're going to chase the market. Understand the market you're investing in before you do anything. Or you're taking a big risk. You have to understand what you're doing first. So you won't become emotional. When I did it, it felt like cheating. Yeah, I guess you could say the Lord has given me insights into things. And it felt wrong, right? It feels wrong for me to engage in quite a few things these days. It feels wrong, so I can't do it. It feels like it's, a, it's an unfair advantage thing. Investments, you have 
in order for somebody to make it with investing, somebody's going to have to lose, which means somebody's going to take everything they own and put it into some stock over here. And they're going to lose all the money they have in order for other people to gain. When I crunched the numbers behind that, I was drew from the whole thing. I can't do that. I can't be a part of that. Because that literally is profiting from somebody else's failure. And I couldn't do that. That will never make it worth it to me. I couldn't do that. But each person has to live according to the truth the Lord has given them. If you know too much, you're going to find that you can't be a part of most of these things in the world. The more you learn, the more conviction you're going to have behind everything you do. Period. Why do you think one of the apostles said, you know, thank God where you are. Thank God that you don't have to, that you don't have this burden, that you can live your life free without these burdens. Just be thankful to the Most High for what you have and where you are. And enjoy the freedom the Lord has extended to you. And live an honest life as best you can with all of what you are. But see, in this day and age, you have a lot of people, they want to know what's behind the back door. And I'm telling you right now, when you find out what's behind that door, you cannot live your life like everybody else anymore. You're no longer innocent concerning the true darkness in this world. There'll be so many things you cannot support anymore. There'll be so many, you know, you can't enjoy yourself. And I can't go to, a, for example, a lot of people can go to a movie and it's no big deal to them. I cannot do that because of what I know. Many of you can listen to music and it's no big deal. I have to be very careful of what I listen to. Or it's a big deal to me. I, I can't do it because I've seen behind the curtain, you could say. I've been through certain doors that uh, nobody should ever go through. All these people who brag about all the things they know for the most part. I know a lot of people are lying out there because once you have knowledge... Once you have knowledge of what they're doing behind the scenes, you cannot live your life the way everybody else does. You, you cannot. You cannot unsee what you have seen. You can't do that. And there are a lot of things you can no longer be a part of because what used to be innocent is no longer innocent. Hmm? And it carries great conviction. I can't go see a movie like you guys would go see a movie. I can't listen to music like people would listen to music. Can't do that. There are a lot of things I cannot do that you guys can do. Can't do it. So enjoy the freedom the Lord has given you and be thankful. But what do you have people doing? You have people trying to learn. Every dark secret they can muster up. The more you know. Or you're going to have to do to continue to walk in this life. Your daily inventory list is going to get quite long. Okay, let's see where we're at. Someone says, uh, question Michael, is it, let's see, is it true that Zelensky now wants to stop the war with Russia? Do you think it's due to Trump's comment last night? I'll tell you what, if Zelensky wants to stop the war, then why is he campaigning for weapons this morning? Huh? If he wants to stop the war, right? Why did he not take steps this morning? Or even last night to do that. Why is he now trying to gather up as much weapons as he can? See, he understands he's about to be cut off. Last night clearly demonstrated that there is no Democratic candidate viable enough to be president for the next four years. He did tell everybody that that's the way it is. So right now it looks... It looks, you know, 
and it's definitive that Trump is going to be the next president. Right now, this day, right now, now understand that I'm just saying right now, this day, based on what's before us, tomorrow could change everything. And we only have those candidates for today. It goes for today. But they understand that Trump has a high, is a high probability they're going to have to deal with Trump, and Trump does not support dishing out all that money to support some of these things. So that's why everybody watched this debate, just like we said the other day. How do we know that? Because every newspaper in the world or every magazine, every notable magazine around the globe watching, they commented, it, it was headlined on magazines, the debate was, with Biden and Trump. Everybody was watching. Because the decisions made within America changed the world. Everybody was watching. Everybody was. And so um, people know what they have to deal with. So they're going to get ahead of it. Right? Anyway. anyway, that's for today, though. Right? Because we don't know what can happen. We don't know what tomorrow's going to be like. In all honesty, the way things are going, we could have, you know, two brand new candidates tomorrow. We could have no candidates tomorrow. We don't know. We just don't know. So that will stand for only, you know, today because we don't know what tomorrow brings right? we don't know what tomorrow brings. but i know the world is bracing for trump to be in power i know that washington has been bracing for trump to be in power i know that there's a buzzword that's been going around that already pre-selected trump as commander-in-chief but you know, that's the way it is. So let them do what they do. You'll have an understanding of all things about where they stand and everything else on a daily basis. All those things will become clear. They will. They will. I just hope that we stand in our place to do what the Lord called us to do. Somebody said, do you think Michelle will be chosen as, a, you know what, I'm going to tell you guys something. Do you guys understand that Michelle Obama hates politics with a passion? Do you guys know that? Do you know that? She hates politics. When I say she hates politics, I mean she hates politics. Hates it. Well, now you know something maybe you didn't before. She can't stand politics. I mean, she has a visceral response to politics. So there you are with that. There you are with that. There are also, for example, a Democratic convention to select somebody else August 19th, right? It won't be the first time it happened. This happened before, right? Where they had an open convention where they selected somebody else. This happened before, historically. It would just happen again. And, um, but there's some people who just simply don't qualify for being president. And this is where you have to be careful. Certain people do not qualify, never step up to throw their hat in the, in the mix. They do not qualify. This is how you know they're on the internet. They talk a lot of noise, a lot, they do. And, and sometimes they don't know what they're about. They just don't. There are certain people who can never be president again. They cannot. See, listen, some people just like to throw people under the bus. Some people hate people so bad, they want them to be the, the bad guy in the public's eye. And some people have stated by writing or had some big speech and they have to stand by what they said in prior times. So they're stuck. Some people said Obama's going to be the Antichrist and he's, so they have to stick with that. They can't move from that. They have to defend that. Even if Obama were to die and go into the grave, those same people will say, nope, he's got to still be alive somewhere. He's coming back out of the grave to, to you know, do this. That, that's a, when you're dealing with prophecy or what people think is going to happen, if you put yourself out there in the public's eye with something you strongly believe in, right? 
I'm telling you, if it did not come from the most high, I would not do that because you'll end up defending a position that may not ever come. That's what you do. That's what you see people doing all the time. You have some people out there that keep saying Hillary is going to be president. You have some people that keep saying that Biden is the Antichrist and all this and the other, right? Then when you closely at what these people have said, there's hardly anything ever comes true. But but listen, that comes when Satan can tamper with people too. And he can have people believe things strongly and sometimes trust a person so much we will run with what they say. I encourage people to do none of that. I trust what the Lord gives me. I do not trust what people give me. Right? So if the Lord does not give it to me, I simply don't have it. It's hearsay. And if I have no experience with it, I don't like talking about it in the first place. But I'm saying all this to let you know something. When you have an idea that you believe about somebody else and you publish that idea you believe about somebody else that was given by somebody else, you're taking a big risk. But listen, Christians, if the Lord ever gives you something, you have to have a boldness to come forward with it. See, I take a big risk every single time, whether it be a dream or something else. If, if, if I have that knowing that this is going to happen and I get instructed to, to let you guys know about it and then to drop it. It takes, it takes a, that's a gutsy move because they'd be absolutely wrong. But anything that's coming from the Lord, right? I will step forward with it. Now I will not step forward. If, if, if the, if, uh, if the most credible people in the world came and told me something, and I thought it was real. Do you not know I would not present what they just told me? I will not do it. I don't trust people like that. I don't trust spirits like that. I do not trust anything like that. But when the Lord gives me something and he instructs me, I'll, I'll go ahead and go forward with it. Now, most of it sounds outlandish, doesn't it, until it takes place, which is why most of my conversations sound weird like the rantings of a mad person until about four or five years passes. And then people begin to see it. Have you noticed that? It's about a four or five year period. And then people begin to see it. And by that time, I will not revisit those things. So, but that's with the Lord, right? And Christians should be just like that. When the Lord gives you something, go forward with it. Now the Lord qualifies what he gives you. The Lord's not going to give you anything that contradicts his word. That'll never happen. And anything he gives you, should somebody know it, is going to end up edifying the body of Christ. But people have to be bold enough to trust the living God. But they're doing the opposite. A lot of people trust people more than they trust what, what's given to them by the Lord, they do. They trust people more than they trust the living God. The Lord will let you know. Believe me. I give you an example. When I have a, if I have a dream that I didn't, uh, I was supposed to let out, and I don't say anything, it eats me up from the inside out. It's almost like everything else disappears except that one thing. I, it burns. It literally burns. It burns. And then when it's released, guess what? I can have peace again. I can have no peace until I follow through with it. Because you don't, first of all, when the Lord gives you something, you don't want to go out there in the public and say it. You do not. Because it's not going to go along with what anybody else said. It's just not. It's going to make you look like an idiot, right? You're going to be the oddball. You're going to go against people who have reputations and everything else. It, it just does not complement what man thinks very well. And you're going to be thrown under the bus because of it. But then, of course, when time passes, when time passes, because time proves all things when time passes, 
people begin to see. If they kept it, it can be very helpful to them. It really can be. It's not for everybody. It's only for those who are meant to hear it. Remember that. It's not to make a person famous, and you're never to sell what the Lord gives you. When he gives you something, it is for the edification of the body. Remember that. But you will be thrown under the bus because of it. You have to suffer that. It seems to be the thing that goes with the territory. But what do we have? What do we have next? Somebody says the war. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me go back. Well, I gotta come. See, that's why I like, I like Robin's capturing and posting messages because uh, Mixler is terrible. Afghanistan's and Iran and Afghanistan sending people there. Are we sending people there, Kennedy? Uh, yes. Someone said, how do you know who's supposed to hear it? God has a language with all of us. You have to learn that language for yourselves. Here, here's what I mean by that, with God's language to all of us. There's something that captures your attention, just yours, nobody else's. You'll be driving down the road and supposedly you, you may see a stop sign, right? Now, everybody else saw the stop sign, but you see the stop sign. And it glimmers a specific way. And it captures something within you, right? And you pause and stop. And through that stop sign, shimmering a specific way, it's almost like you perceive something coherent. So you may get a communication that says, don't go left. Well, that stop sign glimmered. I don't think I'm supposed to go left. And everything in you will say, don't go left. And so you go right. And sure enough, when you look back, an accident happened to the one who went left. Now, only you can understand that. Nobody else can. So what I'm telling you is this. God has a specific language to all of us. All of us. There is something, some set of things that will capture your attention and nobody else can see it but you. And it's meant to capture your attention. Take note of when that happens. Because every time it happens, something will speak into you. Not audibly. See, with the Holy Spirit, you know that you know that you know that you know you must do something. You never question it. That's how you know it's from the Holy Ghost. Anybody who receives from the Holy Ghost will not sit up there and say, I wonder if that was the Holy Ghost. That's not what a person says. You know what they say? Somebody will say, what are you doing? I'm going over here. Oh, why? And they, you don't even care to explain. You know that you know to go right or that you go left or that you better stop or that you better go forward. All of you have these moments. Your phone has rang. And you said, I'm not answering that. You went off, did something else. Someone said, won't you answer your phone? No, 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 not that one. All the other ones, but not that one. Right? Because you know. And you've also had a time where you went against it. Everything told you not to do something, and you did so anyway. And the first thing you said within the first few seconds was, I should have never done that. When you go against it, you had to fight yourself to go against it because everything in you knew to follow the instruction. God speaks on a level without words. If God speaks into your soul, you're going to perceive it beyond words. You're going to know that you know that you know you have to do it. See, this is where women have to be careful. Women, other things can speak into you on a slighter level. And if you don't know the difference between the two, all of you have rotten timing. Have you guys ever noticed all the women that dry? Why do? Why is it you? You always have a complaint of something wrong happening on your way somewhere. It's your timing. Because most women, their timing is just like this. They get this. They get this feeling. They say, you know, well, I better go now. I gotta go now. I can go right now. They don't know where it's coming from, so they get up and go right because they. Something is communicating to them to get up and go right now. That's a woman's timing. A woman always has to be careful. 
to watch what they're listening to. Remember, Eve heard the serpent, not, not Adam. Adam did not, Eve did. In fact, throughout the word of God, right? Women have been responsible for hearing quite a few things. And men did not hear it at all. Ladies, you have to be careful of what you're listening to. God will never give you anything to accuse someone with. That's my caution statement to you. God will never give you information to accuse someone with. If you are given information to accuse someone with, then you better remember how you received it because that came from the adversary. That did not come from the living God. That means, yes, you have an ability to hear in the spiritual realm all the time. you got to be careful by what voice you're moving from. That's why in the Bible it says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. You think it says submit yourselves to your husbands simply because of tradition? Like you're supposed to do everything the husband says? No. It's because you have an ability to hear into the spirit realm. But if you submit yourselves to your husbands, and if that husband is submitted unto the living God, you'll not be acting upon these demonic, you know, unctions. Do you hear me? That's why rebellion is no good for any, any female out there. If you ever sense rebellion coming close to you, start praying. Because Satan desires of all. Why is that? He can destroy the seed through you. You're one of the most effective vessels to get to the seed. You are. You're the first line of defense in war against Satan himself. You are. Someone that says, what is rebellion definition? Let me give you a COT definition. To rebel is similar to repel, right? To push away, to act the opposite. But you do so with vigor. It's when you know of a way, but you refuse that way. That's what that is. When you act contrary to that right way you know, that's rebellion. Period. That's rebellion. Rebellion against the Most High or spiritual rebellion. You can only rebel against those things that you know of. And people know they know quite a bit. To doubt the word of the Lord is rebellion. Because the, all the while you're doubting it, you're also saying no to it. Do you know that? It's rebellion. Rebellion will lead to the death of a person. In fact, the Bible says, if a person is rebellious, right? All the rebellious people, our children are, are, are operating under the power of the prince of the air. Pride, pride will try to tell you that you're, you're making your steps by yourself. That's not what the Bible teaches. I want you to remember something. Everything that you do is influenced by one of two kingdoms. Everything. Everything you do is darkness or light. So in everything that you do, in everything that you say, in all the responses, in every move you make, you're serving one of two kingdoms. If you can remember that, then you do well with your next steps. But pride will tell you that somehow you're making your step on your own. You're doing nothing on your own. You're serving one of two kingdoms with everything that you do. And you're choosing between the two. 
if you can remember that. That's like a key that will unlock a great many things in your life. Hmm? Never forget that. All right. It is it is nine twenty. What what is what is it with nine twenty two? Do you guys know this is the eighth time that I've stopped at nine twenty two? You guys do know that, right? You know that. Now I'm not in numerology or anything. It's just a repetitious thing I've been doing. Nine twenty two. Does it make that time significant or what? Nine twenty-two. Oh boy, you guys know in that tablet. I can see those numbers, the date written in that tablet. Nobody. It's almost like people cannot hear that. <laughs> those dates were in that tablet. One was the twenty-ninth. Was the date in that tablet? I could see the. You guys know I had that dream about that tablet with all the plans in it right before they started having these shipwrecks in the bridges and the phones were going to all this kind of stuff. I wish that I wish that people would pay attention. They're not going to stop. We will have something about, I'll say about 12 times worse than 9-11. It's coming. Get yourselves ready. They will maximize the blow to this country. This country, they're going to maximize the blow. You keeping count, Kennedy, on the 40? I think the other group got there a bit prematurely. At any rate, but you guys know something. When, and this is true, it doesn't matter where you are. It does not matter what your conditions are. And I'm only saying this because I've been through this over and over again. When, when, the, when the onslaught of the enemy is at its heaviest, regardless of what the conditions are. Realize at that moment that your relationship with the Lord is your saving grace. It is the only thing you will have left in a lot of most, in most cases. The Lord is present in those times. Even in those times where he's the only thing we have left. Isn't that something? You're okay, Kennedy. But even in those times where the Lord is your last resort, do you not do you not know that He loves you without end, and that He'll show up on the scene? Do you know that? Do you guys know that? I've been in that position where I was not thinking about the Lord until the trouble came, and when the trouble came, and it overwhelmed everybody, and there was no choice but to call out on His name. He was right there. He was right there. Isn't that something? You know what that means? For any of you out there that have truly chosen Christ, which means you truly accepted what he did at the cross, do you not know he'll never abandon you no, no, matter, no matter what? So long as you truly believe in him, He'll never abandon you. Never. During the hardest times in your life, he'll be there. He'll be there at that time. All too often, just like the scripture says, he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Well, we're just like babies. We know that we need. We all too often we don't know what we need. 
The Lord knows what we need. And he will supply those needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. So long as you believe in him. He's got you. Remember that. No matter how hard things get. Do you guys remember that? And because you believe in the Lord, then all things are purposed in your life for your growth and for your freedom. Not for punishment. Not for bondage. But for your growth. Your freedom. Your absolute deliverance. Please remember that. Please remember that and understand that by your readings in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because this world is going to attempt to redefine who Jesus is. For all of you who believe in Christ with a lot of faith, your time to fight is coming also. Your time to fight means it's your time to shine in this fight of faith. Folks, I'm going to say God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at COT. I will. If not later on this evening, we'll see. I, I want to thank you guys for the these, these fellowship gatherings. They're quite extraordinary. They are. So don't find it strange when these gatherings, even online, go to a very different level. That will actually have an impact, a physical impact, right there where you are. I say that not as some, you know, not not as some bait and bait and tackle thing. No, 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 no. no. I want you ready for that. We're truly going into a new season of things. A season of operation, you could say. In order for some of you to operate, you require a quickening, a healing. With that, folks, I'm going to say God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to see some of you in the chat room in about an hour. I'll be back in the chat room, okay? Just chat with you guys. I'll see you guys then. Probably answer some more questions or something like that for some of the night owls. To everybody else, you guys were awesome. God bless you. God bless you. Back on the KD file. We have to get rolling in that too. That we do. God bless you guys so much. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at the Council of Time. Yep, and yesterday was Angela's birthday. I can't tell her age. Actually, she's eight years old. Now, something. Did you guys get that? I can only say that once. Yeah. See you guys next time here at the Council of Time. God bless. Big deal.